Hello, happy Monday. It says we have sound, so I think we have sound. <laughs> Let's start the week correctly <laughs> with sound, with video. We're all good to go. And some of you have already jumped in and watched the first stencil class. And I know some of you are gonna be in the comments going, I can't find the stencil class. Breathe, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about it as we scrap and we're gonna get through it. We're all good, we're all good. Happy Monday. I hope you've had a lovely weekend. Uh, let's pop over here. We've got Caroline and Pam and Debbie and Antoinetta and Kay and Elaine and Jonan and Connie and Cheryl and Leanne and Leslie and Pam. Michelle is in Overland Park. She's just you know, hanging out in, in my homeland. Um, so yes, hello, hello, hello. I hope you've had a lovely weekend. And um, let's, let's, let's do some scrapping today. I have promised to do some back to school scrapping. And I have my traditional one four by six portrait on the steps in front of our house, which is traditional as long as we've lived in the house that had the steps. Before that, we were in a flat, <laughs> seven doors down. <laughs> so yeah, that's what we're gonna do today. Um, hello, Claire and Sophia and Donna and Debbie. Uh, yes, so let's have a look. Also, <laughs> I'm going to do this. <laughs> Remember last month's kit, we had the chipboard frames. I don't know. Pick an eye. Pick an eye. Which eye should I look through? Um, uh, we did these chipboard frames, and I didn't use all of them. In fact, I only used half of them. I'm going to use one today. So if you've still got these and you want to pull one out, go for it. Right. Let's, let's get rid of desk and that's enough looking at my face. Right, so we have got, um, this is what I made last time with one big, two small photos. Yep, yeah, needs journaling. I think mm, maybe tomorrow afternoon is gonna be the sit down. Well, I don't sit down. I always say sit down, I'm not sitting down. I have a standing desk, I never sit to scrap. Um, but anyway, I, ha I don't often end up with a stack of pages that need journaling, but right now I have that. So I'm gonna do that. And we're gonna pull out these back to school elements in the kit. So let's, let's get this up here. And that includes the, um, the field trip six by eight. And I'm so excited. Orangina is here getting my Moana references. I think I might be a shiny crab. I'd like to be shiny. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So we have got back to school stuff in here somewhere. Ha ha ha, that's very school. And we've got this school paper from Field Trip there. And a school cut apart, school rainbows, school crayons, which he'd probably turn his nose up and be like, ahem. We use colored pencils now, but whatevs, I still love a crayon. Okay. Oh, we got multiple people in Kansas today. Look at you all representing, I love it. Okay, and we got this. So I'm going to pick one of these first um, and then build the page around it. Look, there he is in his spacesuit right there. Is he on the back too? Oh, yes, but the same photos. Oh no, these are different. That's a Christopher Robin photo. And that's, um, <laughs> this is a funny one. It's just a really cute photo, but he's literally just sitting um, in the coffee shop around the corner from the dance studio um, before he was big enough to come with me and he used to go uh, for a walk with the Adhesive Avenger while I went to class and then I'd meet them uh, for, for a coffee, yeah. It's just, you know, normal routine. This blue with this, there's two shades of blue in here. Well, three, because there's a navy. I might just go with the very first page in the book. It's not cheating. And I don't know why I'm looking for forward, or I'm looking further, because my own rule is when you find something and it's gonna work, use it, stop looking. So there we go. That's what we're gonna do. It's gonna have that. We get an extra bend and snap. Oh, it doesn't really snap. It tears. Speaking of which, speaking of bending and snap and, and, and tearing, oh my goodness, 
a friend who is generally crafty but doesn't scrapbook. I got her to scrapbook once and she was like, what am I doing? It was not her thing, but she was a good sport. Um, anyway, she got a, um, a, one of those reels that you didn't go searching for. It just comes up in your recommendations. And it was scrapbooking ASMR. Have you, has anybody run into this account? This account is like huge. And it's literally the sound of a lovely lady with beautiful fingernails, not like mine, which decided like five minutes ago that two of them just decided that the varnish was done. And I'm sorry, you're all gonna have to pay the consequence because if I put it wet, it's gonna make, it, if I put it on now, it'll be wet and make a disaster, right? Anyway. ASMR lady has beautiful nails and runs her adhesive roller over stuff and then you know puts it down and we can hear her hands like this and my friend sent it to me and she's like so why are you not doing this and I had never considered that you wouldn't even like I do consider the sound in like I want you to be, like, I get complaints if I edit out the sound of adhesive rollers and stuff like that. People do like to hear it. But I never thought, like, you don't even need to show a technique. You could just have the sound. What? My mind is blown. So, no, I've never done that. But I'm very curious if any of you have run into this account. I love that it was shared to a friend who doesn't scrapbook, but not to me. But there we go. Okay, so Ben and Sam. Sophia says, Vicky's new paper pad has navy wood grain. Well, I'm here for that. But no, I haven't seen it yet. I may have been, um, well, <laughs> I had plenty on my plate for the weekend anyway. And then it was D23, <laughs> which is like creativation for Disney. <laughs> it's the big expo where everything's announced. And so if I did turn my phone on or anything, if I looked over, it would just be like, have you seen all these things? And I was trying to like keep my distance at the same time wanting to know more. So the things that caught my eye the most, I'm totally getting that Baybax marshmallow s'more cuddly, sorry, has to happen. Um, and, um, there's a Christmas film. I'm, 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 how many times can I come back to the camera before we scrap up? There's a Christmas film. I have not seen the trailer for it yet, but it's called Hip Hop Nutcracker. So I'm there. Yeah, that'll be on Disney Plus this Christmas. Okay. So if we're starting with a photo and a journaling thing, paper and a frame my sketch is gonna look like this let's I need to see this on a 12 by 12 because I'm gonna mess up all of the proportion right this is not me choosing this as my background this is me needing to see a 12 by 12 square in order to try to draw a sketch that is not so far off scale that it's useless so that's the that's where we start here okay Baymax s'more plush is hilarious. Um, you realize that um, the best, best part of the Baymax as a s'more plush is that it's s'more scented. What? I have in my desk right now because it's like, <laughs> it's like, I, I, I keep random objects around me that, that I don't know that can, can have magic powers. This is a scented Cheshire cat. <laughs> when was he made, does it say? I don't know. Anyway, he's almost out of scent. And I think WB was about two when these came out. <laughs> so he's kept his scent for quite a long time and it's almost gone. <laughs> but yeah, just, just hangs out in my desk. No. AJ says she does not think she could watch the ASMR scrapbooking account because ASMR bothers her. But she knows a lot of people who love it, but it's not her thing. Dun, dun, dun. 
<laughs> Claire, what are we getting in line for? For the, smu for the, the smush, the plush. I, that was a, a combination of s'more and plush went to smush. No. Yeah, words are hard. Okay. And I've got one beam of light here. Okay. Um, right. So I'm drawing this. Let's see. So we've got square frame here. photo. That's so not the right shape. Look at me attempting to draw this and just no. What are you like? Okay, but that's right. Okay, so we have paper. Journaling's going to go there. We have photo. So then this is going to get a mat. So is this. Everything gets a mat. You get a mat. You get a mat. Everybody gets a mat! Yes. Do, 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 do. Um, Elena, which one are you looking for? The, the plushes that look like and smell like treats? They're available. They hit Shop Disney today. <laughs> I saw them this morning and I was like, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Somebody get me that s'more for my birthday, please. <laughs> Okay, um, then for some reason, every time I've done a back to school layout, I've put the year that he's going into underneath here. So I'm sticking with that. <laughs> so the tile is going to be down here. There. Um, then there's just going to be lots of detail in here. So I'm just going to draw our sunshine in here, but that's not going to be like a single element, although it could be. If you want to play it simple, you put a block of pattern paper there and one embellishment in the middle, and you could call that done. But I'm going to put like a gazillion things in there. <laughs> and then I'm going to work out from here. So I've already got my title here. I can't work down. So I'm going to work side to side. And because I've got all these like cute cut aparts and stuff. So I'm going to take pieces off to the sides like this. And they're going to get mats, too. We're going to go lots of layers. This page is going to feel nice and thick and heavy and detailed. Might put some tabs up here. And a tab here. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Yeah, Baymax is on Shop Disney now. Somebody save me one. Don't go. <laughs> Don't go buying them all before I get one. <laughs> He comes in a tiny version and a smaller version. Or a tiny version and a smaller version? No, a tiny version and a big version. But they've called the big one small because then they've called the tiny one like mini or something. It's not small. I've seen a person holding it. It's not small. Okay. All right. Are we ready? Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Hi. My name's Chamel. I teach online scrapbooking classes, design scrapbooking products, and help you use them to tell your stories in a creative way. It's not just my hobby, it is my job, and that means anytime I scrapbook on the internet, it's considered advertising, and I need to make sure that legally you are aware of that. Right. Thank you, as always, for watching my hashtag advertise. I really appreciate you being here. Things to know. If you're completely new, go ahead and look in the description box. There's a description that explains this whole thing about how I pick a set of supplies for every month and it's called Best of Both Worlds and I use those same supplies all month long and you can play along either with the same stuff, because it's linked, or with similar stuff from your stash. It's all good. I want you to use what you buy, so it's cool. Also, you can find classes, including use what you buy in stamp sets and stencils. Now, if you signed up as an early bird for stencils, that means if you had an annual pass or you signed up already. If you have an annual pass, you already have access, it's on your account. If you signed up as an early bird and your email address is the same as what's on your account and you had an existing account, you've got it on your form. The people who haven't processed yet, and I'm working my way through them today, so there might be a couple of you who do and, a couple, and some of you don't. Um, if your payment comes from a different email address than what matches your account, or if it's the first time you've ever signed up a class and I need to make an account for you. Are we cool? So those two groups 
don't freak out, it's not on your forum yet, but I'm working through that list. And, and right now you can find the first video and then there's three more that will come up and at, I'm just working through all of this to get it there for you. It's, it's imminent, it will not be long at all. And I can tell you which stencils we use. So these are all stencils that were in Best of Both Worlds kits. Yeah, so if you follow along, you might already have these. But just like the stamp set class, any time that I um, show you the idea, the idea is designed so that you don't have to use exactly the same stencil. The whole idea is that every time you go, oh, I have this stencil and I bought it and I spent this much money on it and I haven't really used it enough to get its money's worth, you could go ding, 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 I have a reference for that. I have four different techniques and I could use the same stencil on each of those four ways, make four different, very different layouts and, and be fine and, and then feel like, yes, I, I did use the thing that I bought. I used what I buy. And, and then, you could then swap that for anything, yeah? So you can go back to those four ideas over and over again. Different colors, different stencil, different motif, different photos, it's always gonna look different. But you'll have four ways that you'll know, I can use my stencil like this. Cool? Stamps as well. Okay, um, I think that answers all that question. Now, mm, Friday. Friday is when I'm up at SBC Fest, that's at scrapbook.com this weekend. It's Friday and Saturday, and I'm up on Friday. Any questions about that, let, let me know. Um, you could put SBC Fest question in your live chat and I'll make sure that I uh, don't miss that. Okay, you can always ask questions and I do try to watch, but you know, if you've got something since that's coming up, um, let's do that. Oh, also, last thing, last thing and then we're gonna scrap. Christmas kit is Wednesday afternoon. Okay, Wednesday afternoon. All right, done, let's go, okay. Kay says, ah, I paid with my husband. Oh, I was showing you the stencils and then I didn't show them to you. I'll show them on the desk. Kay paid with her husband's account so she's got to wait for me to do it. It won't take me long, okay? I'm on it, I'm on it. So we use this floral one that was a slimline stencil. It does, you, the idea does not have to be a slimline. You can use it with any stencil. We use polka dot, which is, you know, my, I think everybody should have a polka dot stencil. It's just super useful. Um, I used this one, which was recent, the sunshines, and this one was also very recent, the waves. That was last month's kit. So those are the four that you see in the class. Flowers, sunshines, dots, waves. Cool? All right, let's make this layout. Do, 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 you belong over here. So let's first pick where we're going to go with background paper. I got these cut apart. I want that to be quite a big part of it. And I've got plenty pieces to mat with from my doodle bug packs. So that's where they're going to come into play today. Right. Elaine, I'm not sure if, 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 yeah, if, if you're asking this before or after I said it because of the, the little bit of lag in the live. But yeah, Christmas kit, that includes stamps, Wednesday afternoon. Okay. So we can do red and white dots. Let me put this here. I kind of want to, yeah, I think go into this blue. <laughs> joyous to the world. Is your name Joy or are you just joyous all the time? Um, says that she loves the sketch at the beginning and that is something that she's starting to do on her own pages so that she doesn't just spend the whole time moving stuff around. Well, we've all been there. Sometimes I still end up moving stuff around, but it is, um, it is super useful and I find that because I need to keep to at least a certain amount of time here when we're on a live stream. And um, that's why I, well, that's part of why I started putting the sketches in. I've noticed a funny thing that I might put in as like a six by 12 page next to this or something, but 
he doesn't wear a school uniform and he always picks what he wants to wear for the first day of school and, and indeed pretty much every day. Um, and for the last three school years, his first day of school, he has worn a Disney button down shirt of some kind. So this year he has like a vintage, it's hilarious, um, a vintage goofy on a plane going around the world. I don't know if you can tell that what that looks like. But anyway, um, it's so vintage that it's got a map printed on it with where he's flying around the world and the countries are labeled and a lot of the countries don't exist anymore. And um, so he, um, he chose that one this year. Last year he wore one with like the, um, the Disneyland logo, the old 50s style, um, the big D and then like an old 50s style Mickey head that was all just printed on a button down shirt. And the year before that he did, he wore a button down that was, um, made from a Disney duvet cover by, or sheets by a little gun tank. And um, I do kind of think that that's funny that he's got this clear idea in his mind of what a first day of school look should be. So I might, um, I might do something with that. Okay, so I think if I do that as a full background, it's gonna be too much for the embellishment that I wanna put on there. Yeah, so this is going to be cut down. That's fine. Right. So let's go ahead and mat that baby over there. So we're going to do that in the blue. Mm. I think brown ink going by the colors in the photo. So I'm going to swap my ink out because I've got black one out. Let's pull the brown one out. This shirt was a find years ago, like he was tiny. And sometimes you see something and you're like, do I risk it? What if he doesn't like Disney in three or four years time? But it was the right call. It was the right call. We found it in a charity shop. And it was like, sometimes you find something that's properly vintage in a charity shop and, you're, and you kind of look around, like side to side, going, did anybody else realize that I just got true vintage? Did you know that this was true vintage? Um, but yeah, if you're, if you're British, you'll, you'll know what vintage it is if I tell you. It's a St. Michael shirt. It's not m and It's St. Michael. Um, yeah, it has, had the tags still inside. Okay. Yeah, so I think Michelle, Michelle's a green. Put those three photos together and then put them on something. I might just do it as a, like, a little mini page in between. If it carries on all the way through primary school, then I'll have to do a 12 by 12. <laughs> and here are all the first day button downs. Blues here. I'm gonna put some yellow behind this. <laughs> Elena ordered two medium and two mystery micro of the um, the Disney plushes. <laughs> So she has no guarantee of a Baymax more in the little size, but it'll be okay. Her kids won't care as much as she will. All micros are adorable and scented. Um, she says that, I'm guessing that's the American store has got a limit of two per guest. There you go. Yellow. Mm, that side's too wide. Let's turn that down a little bit. Da, 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 da. No. 
Let's start with that big cut apart. Doesn't fit. Fits, but we lose the green. Mm. No. <laughs> Um, or are there squares on this one? Oh, it was not my choice. It's supposed to be a camera. <laughs> oh, I do kind of like that. It's different than what I was expecting. I don't know, but I like it in a frame. Okay, I have another one of these frames though. So maybe I come back and I put that in a frame on another page. Hopefully I won't forget. Okay, so the other thing I could do is that, which I think would be kind of cool. So let's do that. I'm gonna take the ray gun because it makes me sad. Um, and it's cute. I use it. I, 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 I'll use it for um, Buzz Lightyear. That's like Astro Blasters, the ride. <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put that in there and then this is gonna have lots of embellishment. That'll work. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Okay, which means I got that and these. Does the rucksack work in the frame? Oh, that's a good call. Yes. So there's another option for you. You could either go up and have no text. I think that's probably the better call. Or you could go down and keep the text but lose the straps at the top. Um, <laughs> this rucksack, this backpack, I'd never heard the word rucksack until I came um, to this country. Um, but anyway, backpack, this, this school bag. Is it just me or does anybody else get owl vibes? If you added two big eyes in this part, is it just me or is it an owl? I mean, it's clearly a backpack, but for some reason, every time I look at it, I go, oh, look, it's an owl backpack. Oh, no, it's not. You're just seeing an owl there. I don't know. <laughs> Might just be me. Claire says, what's the story with the ray gun? There's a, the story is just that the original design here was a camera and um, it got, this is one of my papers and the, it, it got pulled out. They didn't like the camera. Um, I didn't particularly love the ray gun and you have to, you win some battles, you lose some battles. I lost that one. <laughs> so they went with that. It didn't really fit my vision for the whole collection. But these things happen. Um, but anyway, that's why every time I see it, I just kind of go, ah, yeah, because I love camera motifs. <laughs> Case nobody knew. <laughs> Did I ever mention? <laughs> I like a camera print. Okay. So that's going to go down here. But what I want to see, and the year's going to go underneath there. Oh, this was coming up onto here so that I had a straight line for title here okay so this space here where'd it go oh so this is all really big so let's not go with that cut apart here it's okay I'll have other school things but definitely okay I know what I'm gonna do with these now and it needs to be circles. Okay. I love that I'm not the only one that can see the owl now, but sorry that you'll never unsee it. <laughs> this is this is the danger of coming to a live stream. All right. Just getting circle punch. In theory, yes, 
I can. Okay. Cool. So we're gonna have oh. Dun, dun, dun. I've had a hair tie. Here it is. Okay. Orange, because it's September. I'm gonna pull out my um autumn backpack today. <laughs> my autumn uh, lounge fly. <laughs> okay. Uh Sophia says she still mourns the whole pack of multicolor puffy cameras that I requested. <laughs> um, and Laura wishes that there had been a pure Chamel collection so that she could see totally unrestrained, free-flowing Chamel making all of the calls on all of the pizzas. <laughs> oh, that would have been a lot of fun, but also would not have sold. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, we're gonna start with three of these. Three circles. Like that. I know these are not on the sketch. It's gonna be okay. Yeah, then we're gonna mat them with the other side. We. Oui. Do you like how I just speak for all of you? As if we're all doing this together. We're all in this together. Yeah. Um, you know the real words to that are. We're all in this to get donuts. Donuts, that's what it's about. True story. High School Musical, the donut edition. Um, yeah, so I'm going to mat each of these in red. If I'd used dies instead of my punches, I could have just cut the red layer. But instead, I'm going to do it with scissors, because that's how I roll. That's how we roll in the Shire. Okay. Oh, Jolene went to Renfest in Kansas City. Oh, good times. Right. So each of these, I hope you had a brilliant time. Ate lots of crazy food. I once went, I, I, I have gone to Kansas City Ren Fest in costume, like in proper costume, but also one year, I think I was 17, I decided to be rebellious. And I went to Renfest dressed for a Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> I don't know why. I just said it, you know, I was I was trying to be like an alien or something, invading the Renfest. It was mad. And I still had a great time. <laughs> but you know, sometimes you look back and you're like, why why was that an idea? I don't know. It just was. So I went to Renfest dressed as Columbia. It was fine. <laughs> oh, I did a terrible cut over there, cutting job there. Da, 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 da. It's okay. I can cover it up. See, it's wonky. It's all right. We like a bit of wonkicity around here. wonky red circles. I'm good with them being wonky. It's fine. Oh, Jolene's little one got a crown and a dragon to your necklace. She's going to dress up in Ren Fest costumes for Halloween. Leanne says she has teens. She's going to Disney. Where to stay? Animal Kingdom or Magic Kingdom? Is that are those two separate questions or is that a linked question? <laughs> like, are you considering staying near Magic Kingdom or at Animal Kingdom Lodge? So Magic Kingdom has three hotels that are near it. Um, the Grand Floridian. 
the contemporary and the Polynesian. Um, Wilder's Lodge is also very, very close. And um, the answer is whatever you can afford. If you can afford to stay in one of those, you go do it. I haven't done it yet. Polynesian is my hotel of dreams. <laughs> um, but I've never stayed there. So, um, yeah. But I have stayed at Animal Kingdom Lodge. Uh, which is a gorgeous resort, really gorgeous resort. But if that's a separate question, and it's just you have one park day and you need to pick between Animal Kingdom or Magic Kingdom. So with teens, oh, it could go either way. Okay, so they are both excellent parks. Please never believe anybody who tells you that Animal Kingdom is a zoo with a roller coaster in it, because that's a bit ridiculous. It is, it, like, as far as immersive theming goes, um, the, the immersive theming of Animal Kingdom is immense. None of the parks are themed in the same way that's just a full experience that you just shift throughout. When you go to Magic Kingdom, we have the lands. And as you go from land to land, you kind of just have to make the leap that now I'm in the future, although the future looks like, you know, the 70s, but the future in Tomorrowland. And then I go across a little way and I have teacups and a circus and now I'm in Fantasyland. And, you know, and you keep moving around. Whereas Animal Kingdom is, here is your world and you are going to float through it. Even with Pandora, which is obviously not of our world, but the theming is just so subtly done that you just drift from one land to the other. Um, so that is beautiful in terms of like, if you like thrill rides until Tron opens next spring, um, Magic Kingdom, your thrill rides are the mountains. So you've got Space Mountain, which is a proper thrill ride. Um, you've got Big Thunder Mountain, which is not a scary roller coaster, but it's also not a baby roller coaster. Um, it's great fun. I like Big Thunder Mountain a lot. Um, you've got Splash Mountain, which I think is weird to call it a thrill ride, but some people do. It does have the big whoosh at the end. Um, and then you've got, did I put that too far over? I should have totally did. Um, then you've also got um, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, which is a family coaster that's a lot of fun, but it's not like a super scary coaster. Everybody can go on it. I mean, there is a height restriction, but I think WB was like, like, he's super short, and he went on it when he was four or five. Yeah, so pretty much the whole fam can go on there. Teens can definitely go on there. Okay, but at Animal Kingdom, you'd have Everest, which is a coaster I can only ride, like, once every second trip because <laughs> it, goes, it goes up, and then it goes backwards. If you can't do backwards, is there? Okay, sorry, I'm just, I'm just vibing here, and Leanne's like, Nope, we're going to go to both parks. I need to know where to stay. Okay, if you can afford to stay at a monorail resort near Magic Kingdom, do that. Hands down. Stay at the Polynesian. If you've got enough money to stay at the Polynesian and it's available for your dates, go to the Polynesian. Do it. Um, but, um, yeah. Contemporary has a great location in that you can walk to Magic Kingdom, but it's that style that was like, super duper cool in the 80s and lacks the kind of like i don't know theming of of the rest i like i like the theming of the others i would pick contemporary last of those three plus wilderness lodge i think in my order my dream order polynesian is number one wilderness lodge grand floridian then the contemporary that's what i would put there you go um, the teens will love the Polynesian. Everybody loves the Polynesian. It's great. <laughs> Not everybody, obviously. <laughs> Let me just speak for the entire world. Clearly there will be people who don't like it, but I love it. And Claire is just out here to remind us that the greatest ride in all of the places is the People Mover. So yes, I will always meet you at the People Mover. You send me a message that says, meet me at the People Mover. I'm there. You got it. Okay. 
that's going to go behind. And I only need about that much. Sam will only ride Thunder Mountain. <laughs> Favorite roller coaster. <laughs> it's a good choice. It's a good choice. Sam says she loves Wilderness Lodge. That's her favorite. Donna is a big fan of the Grand Floridian. I don't think you can go wrong with these, with the monorail resorts, to be fair. Good morning, Ina and Brampton. Um, yes, and Ohana, which is the, the character dining in the Polynesian, is open. Grand Floridian has not yet reopened their um, theme dining. Um, what what's happening to um, um, what is happening to Nice Hundred Park Fair? This, this is what we want to know, but I don't know. There have not been any announcements about it, to my knowledge. Right, what we're we gonna put, I want a strip to go behind there. That's what I'm looking for, what color? I keep coming back, maybe I do add green. Do I add green? I might do. Oh, or I could add this. That could be kind of cool. I gotta choose though. Choose your own adventure. Choose the part of this paper that you want to cut apart. Um, it's not a, oh, in fact, I don't need a whole strip. I keep thinking I want it to go all the way across, but I don't. I just want four little pieces. That's fine. Okay. So I have more than one of these, so I don't have to freak out about it. <laughs> I'm just going to cut it from here. One, two, three, four. AJ stayed in the Grand Floridian in 2016. It was beautiful and she was grateful, but even at a 35% discount, she doesn't know if it was worth the money. I can understand those feelings. <laughs> yeah, so the fanciest I've ever stayed in was Animal Kingdom. I have stayed at the value end, I've done all-star movies, which actually, I still rate it. If you want to be in the parks all day, then why, why worry about a hugely expensive resort? So yeah, we did um, all-star movies on our last trip, 2019 trip. We've done Art of Animation in a Family Suite, which was amazing. Um, I really liked it. And we stayed in a Lightning McQueen, in the Lightning McQueen building. So you had to walk through basically like a hotel version of Cars Land, which I was here for. That was awesome. Um, and WB was in a big Lightning McQueen adoration phase and would give Lightning McQueen a hug good night every night. That was awesome. Um, oh, plus we were in the, in the flat at the time and the the suites, the family suites at Art of Animation were basically bigger than our house at home, or bigger than our flat. So it actually felt quite luxurious, even though it's a value resort. Um, and we've stayed at Port Orleans Riverside, which is probably as a full family vote, the favorite. And that's why this time we're doing French Quarter, which is the same big, like the same, they're, they're sister resorts. So it's kind of the same theming and everything, but French Quarter is smaller and it has beignets. So, you know, better snacks. No water wheel, no sit down, fancy book ahead restaurant, but that's okay. Right. Claire's done Pop Century. I've walked around and Pop Century, because it's close to an Art of Animation, so we did it, we walked around, and um, yeah, it's a lovely, lovely spot. And Pop Century's had a refurb, so all the rooms are nice and bright, and all mod cons, that sort of thing. Okay, 
I was just lining that up. Oh, Laura said, what were WB's classmates' reaction to his haircut? Um, a lot of them just kind of stared in disbelief, which was funny. Um, but yeah, lovely positive things. Um, and the comment they came home from teachers, which I hadn't, I hadn't spotted it until somebody said it. And now, yeah, it's, it's like the owl backpack. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Just, just put yourself back to 1996 and remember what Romeo's hair looked like when Leonardo DiCaprio was Romeo in Romeo and Juliet. And it was all like kind of flop, flop in your face long and like highlighted with blonde streaks. And so a bunch of the teachers came to talk to me at the gate and they're like, so on the last day of school, we gave you back WB with this long ponytail and you've brought back a shorter version of Leonardo DiCaprio's Romeo and we're confused over what has happened in between. <laughs> and I hadn't, I had not seen it. And then once, once I did, yeah. Cause this bit continually flops down in his face. <laughs> Can be really moody with it if he wants to be. <laughs> so there we go. Right, how am I doing for time? We're good, we're good. This bit is going to come in here. I'm just going to tack this because I want to be able to tuck things in here. I'm not quite sure. But I also wanted to just get into a spot. See, I can't even guess the right place for the adhesive. Okay. AJ says, have you seen one of the Incredibles rooms at Contemporary? I think I saw one like briefly and I was kind of like, nah, it's okay. It's not amazing. It's not horrible, but maybe I need to go back and have a detailed look. I do love the Moana rooms that the, the Polynesian got in their update. That was cool. Okay. So those are going to go there. I know they're not on the sketch, but I wanted this paper in here and I was struggling to find the way it was going to work and then I saw it. So that's what we've got now. To each of these bits. Let's add this one, because I've got the rainbows, I've got the that school paper, I haven't put the crayon paper in yet. So we're going to add a circle punch crayon to each one. See you later, Claire! Um, and who just said that? Oh, Marlo is waiting for the dining plan to return. And hoping that will be soon. Yeah, I'm surprised that the dining plan hasn't come back yet because it's one of those things that is, oh, it literally is a win-win for both parties. Like, so if you buy the dining plan, not if you get it free, but if you buy it, you basically probably will pay more for food than if you had not bought it. But you have the... Um, convenience of knowing from the beginning I paid for all my food everything's good that's done and you can you can finish that paying that bill like way before the trip starts and there there is a certain amount of wonderfulness in that that then okay so if I pay a little bit extra for my food but it's already done in advance I can see that that and and you then know you're like if I want to do a sit-down meal every day I can do that it's paid for yeah um, but a lot of people who use the dining plan will start that way and then 
halfway through their trip are like, oh, I'm spending too much time eating or I'm not enjoying all the sit down meals or whatever, or I wanna just get something quick so I can go on more rides or go to the pool or whatever. So by and large, Disney makes more money off of you that way. So why is this not back, right? Like people want it back and Disney makes more money. <laughs> I don't see why it's not back. So I'm missing something along the way there. Yeah, I'm missing something. Yellow. I'm going to do more wonky circles. Hello, Natalie. Claire went. Natalie came in. Okay. All right, so now cut these around. Just hold your scissors still and move the other hand. Or <laughs> go find dies or punches that line up <laughs> if you don't want to use your scissors. But it really doesn't have to be perfect. And I quite like the imperfection of hand cut pieces and I enjoy cutting with scissors. Possibly enjoy running with scissors, but there we go. Um, Natalie says, is it because not all of the restaurants have reopened yet? Perhaps also they need to work out new costings for the plant because food is so expensive generally right now. I actually do wonder if it has to do with the volatility in the pricing of food. Because they would lock that into place for like a year, wouldn't they? So if you paid for your meals and they were at a premium, but you paid for it in a year in advance, is it not at a premium if inflation goes through the roof and that's why they're holding off? I don't know. There are a few restaurants that haven't reopened, but most stuff is back open now. Um, yeah, I am interested to see what the, um, what the, the crowd situation is gonna be like. So crowd calendar from when we're there, Aside from the Halloween party, which is going gonna, is gonna to be sold out, I'm sure, because there were three, uh, three Halloween parties booked, and every past year, we haven't booked the Halloween party before the trip. We've waited until that week and then um, looked at the weather report to choose the best day, but two of the three had already sold out, so we had to just pick the last available day and go ahead and book it. Hopefully the weather will be on our side. <laughs> um, so the Halloween party will be chock full, I'm sure. Um, so, dun, dun, dun. where are we going to go with that? We're going to go to that side. I'm going to pop these up. Um, yeah, where was I? What was I saying? <laughs> um... No, oh, I've totally lost it now. I read comments and now my brain's gone. Anyway, we'll move on. <laughs> okay. We're going to have each of these with a little buddy. Oh, um, this is not related to Disney, but an update. You know, I'm trying this September trial, the YouTube advertising thing. Um... So, I found where I could make it so that you don't get seven or eight ad breaks. Now, I don't know, oh, I just, not, now I remember. I've, the comments have caught up with the lag, but okay, I'll come back to crowd calendars. Um, yeah, I, what do I want that underneath? Oh. That side, that side. Where's this one going to go? It's not bouncing back and forth. It can if it goes up here. 
Okay, we'll do that. I might move it. Um, hmm. Does this one need to go over here? Would that just solve my problem? Okay, let's try again. Um, yeah, so I think anybody who watches on the replay, Hello in Tomorrowland, I don't think you'll get seven or eight ads anymore. You should just get ad at the beginning and the end. If that doesn't work out, then the settings are really unclear <laughs> because that's what I've set it to. Right, so going back to crowd calendars, yeah, the, the predictions from different places that tend to be accurate, the Halloween party will be sold out, but um, our busiest day, like the highest crowd number we have is a six out of 10 and we have a two. There's one day that is scheduled to be a two. So we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, Leanne, feel free to go away, do research, and come back with more questions. I'm here for you. I couldn't apply for the Disney Mums panel. Well, it's not called the Mums panel anymore, but I couldn't, apl I couldn't apply for Plan Disney this year because um, I didn't go last year. You have to have been in the last 12 months. <laughs> um, but I, I'm still that level nerdy. So there we go. Right. Ah. Ginny said she watched Friday's replay and got no ads at all. Oh, Natalie says, what is it to? I've never looked at crowd calendars. So it's saying, like, 10 is sold out. 10 is Thanksgiving Day, Christmas Day, Easter Sunday. One is, it never happens. Um, so, but two is a very quiet day. The day after the hurricane was a two. So I don't believe it will actually be that low. We went the day after, because we stayed in the hotel during a hurricane. Um... <laughs> It was fine, but you know, I don't know that that I look back and think that was my proudest moment, but it was great. Um, Pam says, "Do you have to watch the whole ad for it to generate revenue for you?" I don't think I, I don't think so. I don't think so. You can go ahead and skip. You have my permission to go ahead and skip. It's all good. So now what I'm thinking is that each of these get like a multicolored bubble of dots. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yellow, light blue, little green, and down here. Then what color do I need to start with? The big green one. There we go, like that. What's going in here? Kay says, has anybody done Disney by themselves? Yes, I have. <laughs> um, the fam doesn't wanna go, but I would be down for going solo or maybe groups you can join. Um, have you ever been before? Because I've done Disneyland on my own and I actually quite enjoy it. <laughs> But I know my way around. I know what I like. I've actually done character dining on my own. It was slightly cringy, but mostly good fun. Um, and everybody just had a giggle. Of, of, yeah, because I was there on a work trip and everybody else was just having boring hotel um, continental breakfast. And I'm like, but dude, I can have breakfast with Mickey. Like, I'm going to Goofy's kitchen. I'm going to say hi to Goofy and Minnie. <laughs> Chip and Dale, that's my breakfast. I'm not having a stale croissant in the hotel. If Goofy's Kitchen is just across the street. Yeah, so I went to Goofy's Kitchen on my own. And then I had a day on my own at Disneyland. Um, yeah. So there we go. Journey's gonna go here. Let's put this title on. I can use the blue letters. Oh, and we have school theme stencils. And chipboard. Let's definitely put all this stuff up here so I don't forget what I got. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. 
<laughs> Donna's like slightly cringy. I can tell you why it was slightly cringy. Um, it was because a character did something they're not supposed to do. Have I told this story? A character talked to me. It was weird. The end. Moving on. <laughs> don't do it. If you're not a face character, don't you dare talk to me. Mime away. I'm here living my dream. Don't mess with my head. go and we're gonna have a number because he's in year four what so americans that's third grade in age because we start school a year earlier here we start when we're four not five it does sometimes i have to remind myself of how much younger he is in his school year than i was because um not only do they start school when they're four here, his birthday is in April. So I'm in October. And so I was one of the oldest kids in my class. And I started kindergarten at five. So it was by the time we were like two weeks in, I'm six. Um, where he was in full days at four and wasn't five until quite late in the school year. So yeah, um, it's kind of weird. So let's see what we could do with these chipboard pieces in here. Hey, there's a backpack. Does it look like any animals? I'm kind of seeing an axolotl. Sophia, can you see it? Can you see axolotl in this one? I'm reaching now because the other one looked like an owl. But, but I can almost see it. Axolotl backpack, owl backpack. That's what we got. <laughs> okay. So I definitely want this one because it's like the first day of school kind of piece. Um, and then I want to mix these in with these, but maybe it needs to be smaller ones. Okay, so we could definitely, ah, ah they're bouncing everywhere. We can definitely put in Things like this, maybe. Oh, maybe I just need to do this first and then deal with the little pieces. Okay. Jolene says, oh, that's a really good question. What age do you finish school? So you can finish school here at different ages. So you can finish when you're 16 and we have a set of national exams that everybody sits when they are, by the time they're 16. And you can finish then. That would be like leaving when you are a sophomore in high school in America. Um, or grade 10 in Canada. But you can then go on and do two more years that are very standard. That we call here, we call college or A-levels. But there are now lots of different tracks for what you could do with that. Whereas when I first moved here... You either kind of left and found your own way to get a job or you did A-levels. And now there's a lot of different options that aren't just the academic subjects of A-levels. But anyway, those two years, you might do an apprenticeship, you might do something else, but it would be two years that kind of bridge the gap between school and either entering the workforce or going to university. And then when you finish your A-levels, if you are still wanting to continue academically, you'd be 18. And then you go to university at the same age that you would in America. Yeah? Um, the thing we don't have here, we don't have a community college system. So um, there's not really an equivalent of that. There's not really the, I'm 18 and I want to work 20 hours a week and do a part-time um, think there are different ways that you can go to night school, you can do the open university, but there's not like a really easy community college is a set up thing. We don't have that. Cool. Does that answer the question? So a lot of people will carry on to 18, but you can leave when you're 16 if you want. Okay. Okay. 
Also, the other thing that's really different in the two systems is that we specialize in our subjects way younger here. So you start narrowing down your subjects when you go into year nine, which is 13 going on 14. Um, and every year or two, they narrow down further. So by the time you're doing A-levels, you're basically doing three subjects. Most people, if they do A-levels, will just do three subjects. Okay, that's gonna go there. Needs some papio behind here. So the books are gonna go on top. Then I think like a little strip of paper here. Packaging is driving me mad, go away. <laughs> Jolene can't imagine sending kids to school at four or letting them finish at 16. Yeah, it is different. Um, but everybody has the right to do, like you're not cut off at 16. So there are, you can continue to 18 in a variety of different ways and that's always an option yeah is the apprenticeship scheme meant to be a bit like that where you work and learn at the same time ah the apprenticeship scheme is like working and learning at the same time but it is nothing like the american co community college system the american community college system is more like you stay home or close to home and do a part-time university degree yeah whereas part-time university here aside from things like the open university is not really a thing because you go and you do a course. Um, and so it's like, here's what you're going to do. It's just here. Um, like when I did my course over here, it was very different than doing an, an um, American degree because in my American undergrad, I was still like building a schedule going, well, I want this from that subject and this from that subject and this and building it all to make it make sense. That's not how British universities work. You go in and they're like, so this is track A, B or C, which one do you want? <laughs> so my literature masters here and I had three different tracks I could take and it was just once you picked one it was a whole part and parcel and then the undergrad version of the same thing I think they had six options instead of three because there were more people okay Elaine's youngest has just started college. That's A-levels. After finishing secondary school, that's where you finish when you're 16. He's planning to go to uni. All the best to him. I hope it goes well. What subject is he doing, Elaine? If you don't, if, we're, if that's not too nosy to ask. Oh, goodness. Leanne has two December babies, and with the way they schedule things in Canada, it meant two of her little started at three. WB did half days from three, because we do have, um, it's an optional but free year, um, but it's half days plus one full day, so they do four half days and one full day. So he did that when he was three. Yeah, a nursery attached to a primary school here, yeah. <laughs> Natalie says the American system sounds a lot more fluid compared to a British uni. Um, it is, it's just one of those things though where it's the way it's always been. So each system seems completely fine in it. Um, do I want to cut that out? Um, in its own world. But for both things to be considered university, they're very different. Like when I came over here and there were some things in my course that I was really unprepared for, um, and eventually they were like, well, that's because in an American university, you've still been doing the whole curriculum. Like you've been doing all the subjects. You still had to do maths. You still had to do science, even though you were doing an arts degree. Um, and that wouldn't have been the case here. You would have just done just stuff in your subject. So you've spent the same number of hours in class, but you've done all the subjects where the people that are on your course who studied here have only done this subject, so they've gone deeper where I've gone wider. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. And um, is 
much less common for British students to work while they are students. It's not unheard of, but it is less common. And you will find that students do things like work at the uni pub and things like that. Um, but almost everybody I knew when I was at Amer in my undergrad, we all had jobs. I don't know anybody who wasn't working at least 15, if not 20, 25 hours a week. Um, and yeah, that would be very rare here. Uh, da -da -da -da. Right, how do I want this? I want more details in here. You know what I'm going to do. I'm pulling them out again. Why not? And then, like, bring this blue back in. Elaine's son is doing A level in modern history and B tech in criminology and applied science so that he can do forensic like forensic science, not forensics like we talk about it in American high school, which is public speaking and debate. <laughs> but forensics like CSI. Cool. Ah, Natalie did her law degree while working full time as a paralegal in a law firm and it was tough. Yeah. And um, one of my, well, she's like the gym the lady who teaches ballet and stuff at the gym. Um, she is still working full time doing that while she goes to law school. And sometimes I think, oh my goodness, how do you actually physically have the energy <laughs> to stand up and do this? And she's like, I don't. <laughs> so yeah, but that's somebody who's, you know, like when you have done one job and then decide to go back and retrain. Um, yeah. I think it's a little more common to have a job um, if you go back and you've already worked a job. It's hard to give up the life of having a paycheck and go back. That's what it is, isn't it? You've already like moved out. You got bills to pay. If you want to go to school, you still got to make some money. Okay. Do I want this to have more? I kind of do, but I think it's time that I stick it and just find what else I can add to it. I like this one up here. Are these supposed to be sticky? Yeah. Have I just been, I don't know. I think I just I didn't peel the back off. Okay. Oh, Debbie, that's an excellent question. Debbie says, what is the comparison of cost of university from the US to the UK? A whole different kettle of fish. So there's a cap here on how much they can charge you. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think Elaine will know. It's about 9,000 pounds a year right now. Is that correct? So the year I came to England was the first year that British students paid anything for their degree. It had been all state-sponsored, but if but you had to get in. It wasn't as easy to get a place um, as in American university, where if you had graduated from high school and... Um, and you paid the bill, you could probably go somewhere. Maybe not the top university, but a university or a college would take you. Um, it wasn't quite that easy to go. <laughs> April's like, kettle of fish. Yeah. <laughs> ah, words are hard. Um, so, yeah, Elaine's confirming, yeah, 9,000 is right. So when I first moved here, I think British students were being asked to pay 1,200 pounds a year toward their degree, and there were sit-ins at my university. But I was an overseas student, so of course I was paying a lot more. Um, and they were like, come to this sit-in. I'm like, honey, I'm paying for like three or four of you, so you don't want me at your sit-in. <laughs> um, but yeah, so now it's 9,000, um, whereas the amount of American um, the American universities can pay and or can charge in tuition. It doesn't have any cap. It can be huge. Um, I will say absolutely hands in the air. I probably would not have been able to go to university without the scholarship that I had. That's how I went. Um, I still went to a state 
I went to Pittsburgh State, which is a smaller university in Kansas, but the same system that runs the University of Kansas, KU, the basketball place, <laughs> and K-State. Um, but then there's also some smaller ones. There's um, Emporia and Pittsburgh and Fort Hayes and uh, Ottawa. Does Ottawa have a state university? It's been a long time. Anyway, there's more. So I went to one of the smaller, still state-run universities, but even there, the tuition bill could have been huge. It would never have been 9,000 pound a year. <laughs> yeah. So the bill here is a significant bill compared to what, what it was 25 years ago when it was free, but it's nothing compared to America. There you go. The one thing that that is um, somewhat alarming from that Oh, shame about this because that would look nice here, but no. Um, one thing that's a little alarming is that there is a scholarship system in the U.S. that's quite widespread. Like, scholarships are a thing. Schools give them, people fundraise for them. Um, and um, and so if, you know, if you're doing really well, you can apply for all of that. Those are really not, that system is not fully ingrained here yet. There are scholarships, but it's nothing like the buildup that there is in the States. Yeah, so, but yet again, your bill is nowhere near what it would be. So, these things all work out. Journaling's going to go in here. I want something else in here, but I'm not sure what. We don't have yellow school buses, and we, he walks to school. <laughs> what about this clock? Oh, I kind of like that. Okay, and then maybe I can just do enamel shapes either side or small pieces. Jolene's second son is gonna go to Pitt State next year. Once a gorilla, always a gorilla. Yeah, I hope he has a great time. Um, it's an interesting mix, that campus, and I love that it was walkable, um, which is, you know, kind of rare in America. <laughs> Everybody drives everywhere. I walked all the way through my degree. Um, did have to drive to the Walmart, though, because people will freak out about it. Um, dun, dun, dun. Orangina says she has a junior at a state university and with a partial scholarship will still pay almost as much as Autumn. Yeah. And Autumn's numbers were... Autumn got an MBA full-time while working full-time. After the first set of finals, her adrenaline disappeared, and she spent 10 days in bed with the flu. Oh, my goodness. Her MBA was $36,000 32 years ago. Yep. It's a lot. It really is. Okay. I am very, very glad that I went. I mean, I, you do sometimes run into people who are like, university is an outdated system and it needs to go. <sighs> university made me. I don't know. Sorry. It's true. I, it, so I have no regrets, but I could not have gone without a scholarship. Yeah. Just wouldn't have been possible, I don't think. Okay, so I'm going to put more dots in. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do to fill up these spots. Oh, no, can't be green in the little one. It needs to be medium sized green and a little yellow. Okay, I'm happier with that now. What else can I put up here? I just want this one to be a bit bolder and bigger. There? Is it too big? I want the light bulb to work, but it pulls focus. I want the focus to be there. Okay, so then we're going to do gold. The one interesting thing about um, differences since since, he, since apparently in the comments this is interesting. <laughs> um, so when I did my master's over here, I looked at a program to do basically the same sort of study in the States versus here. 
but it would have been two years in the States and it was a 12 month course here. So I didn't get a summer holiday. My summer holiday was write your thesis, um, but I was done in 12 months. Yeah, so I started in October and I had a degree the next October. Jolene says, does WB have d dual citizenship? He qualifies, um, but currently doesn't. There just hasn't been a reason <laughs> to, to do it. Da, 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 da. I'm the same, by the way. <clears throat> I qualify, but I've never paid my money and taken my test. <laughs> I gotta do it. Gotta do it. But I haven't yet. I'm just going full tilt gold here. There's going to be lots of gold. I'm not sure how this one has gone kind of around, so I'm going to try and bring some down here to the bottom edge. There we go. That's better. Right. So journaling will go in there once that's all dry. And there we go. Yay. Yes, Ashley, I'm here for you. <clears throat> She says, I know university is becoming less popular, but I think one of the most important parts of my college experience was how much it expanded my horizons and taught me how to think more broadly about life. Yeah, you just, like, there aren't many times in your life where you meet people from so many different places and upbringings and all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um. Da, 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 da. Okay. So, let's see, is this going to drip if I pick it up? I'm going to give it just a second. Right, so Wednesday, show me your Christmas, Christmas supplies, like Christmas supply stuff. Friday, I'll be live again, 9.30 in the morning, UK time. And Friday, then later in the day, is SBC Fest. I don't think, unless it's been announced today, I don't think the times have gone up yet, but it should be today or tomorrow that they'll announce what time everything is. Um, yeah, you'll need a stencil or two, some paper, um, you'll need white cardstock. If you've got paste, either like Vicky's thick gesso or this sort of stuff or anything else, if you've got some white paste to put through a stencil, even thick acrylic paint, white acrylic paint could do it. Or you can just leave that step out. It's no big deal. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, Wednesday Christmas supplies. What's that? Rhonda. <laughs> um, so I, I, I don't know how far to back up for you, Rhonda. So I teach a Christmas class every year, have done for a gazillion years, and it's called Journey of Christmas. I'm announcing what supplies I'm using, and that includes the stamps on Wednesday afternoon. Um, Elaine says, just a start time published so far for SBC Fest. Okay. So, um, should be any time soon. Yes, and then um, once I finish here and go pick up WB from school, I will be working on those of you who um, need me to like go in and, and manually adjust your stencil res uh, registration, and I'll do that and get the other videos up for you. So if you want to sign up, you so totally can. Right, I think that's everything. I think this is dry enough that I can pick it up now. So let's do that. Da, 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 da. Where are we? There. Hi. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love for you to give it a thumbs up. It makes a lot of things easier or happen and it's just nice. So thank you if you do that. Right. I'll see you maybe Wednesday if you want Christmas info. Maybe Friday morning if you're awake then and want to come to the live or later on Friday for SBC Fest. Yay! See you soon and thanks. Bye-bye!